Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to calculate interest rates using the financial calculator, the BA2 Plus Texas instrument. Now, we've done many other lessons using this financial calculator, so you'll find the links to all those lessons in the description below, most of which are based on time value of money. So, let's look at the first one. We are told here that if you invest 10,000 Rand today in an account that will result in 14,500 Rand in five years time, what is the interest rate that is earned? So here we are looking for the interest rate. And if you see what we have, we have the 10,000 Rand, which you'll have to invest today. That's a present value. And it will result in 14,500 Rand. That is the future value. And the period there is five years. So we're going to use the time value of money elements over here. And we're going to start from the left, going all the way to the right, putting in what we have and then computing what we need to calculate, which is the interest rate in this particular examples. So before we do that, let's make sure that we reset our calculator, making sure that we don't have any input calculations that will affect our answer. So we press second function and then we press here where it's written plus slash minus. And then it's asking us if we want to reset, you press enter and then you've just reset your calculator. So you just press your C slash C to clear your screen. Now we can start with our calculation. Another thing to note here is that by default, this financial calculator is compounded annually. And if you need to calculate something, if it's compounded more than once per year, if they tell us, then you need to change the compounding. So by default, it's compounded annually. And this example here, it's compounded annually as well because they didn't tell us that the interest rate is compounded anything other than annually. If they tell us that, then we'll have to take into account and you'll see it in the examples to follow. So the first thing that we do is to put the time period. It's five years. So we press five and then we press N because it's compounded annually. If it was compounded more than annually, then we would have to take that into account as well when we're putting our compounding periods. And then we put in the present value, which is 10,000 Rand. So I press 10,000 and then I put it as a negative. So I press plus slash minus. So now am I putting it as a negative? Well, firstly, if I'm paying out this money to invest the money, then it's coming out of my business. So I'm putting it as a negative. But the main reason is that our present value and our future value must always have opposite signs. If they don't, then it will be an error and the calculator will indicate that. So make sure that you put your present value and your future value with opposite signs. If you put one as a positive, the other one has to be a negative. So we put the 10,000 Rand, we put it as a negative and we press PV. And then we move on to the next one, 14,500 Rand, that's the future value because it will result in the 14,500. So I press 14,500 and I press FV. And all I need to do is to compute for the interest rate because I put in everything that we were given here. So I press here, it's written CPT and that stands for compute. And then I press I slash Y and that has given us our percentage. It's 7.71%. .71%. So if I were to invest 10,000 Rand today and get 14,500 in five years time, the interest rate will need to be 7.71%. .71%. Let's move on to the second one. If Joe wants to have 35,000 Rand in 10 years time and is willing to invest 2,700 Rand at the end of each year, what does the interest rate need to be for him to achieve this goal? So again, let me clear my time value of money calculation. I press second function and then I press FV. You can see on top it's written clear time value of money. Okay, now I've done that. Now I can start with my calculation. What is it for? It's for 10 years. That's the compounding period. So I put 10. Again, this is compounded annually because we're not told that it's anything other than annually. And then I press N. And then the second thing I put there is if Joe wants to have 35,000 Rand in 10 years time. So this 35,000 Rand is my future value, but is willing to invest 2,700 at the end of each year. So if he's willing to invest 2,700, that is my payment or PMT. So I put 2,700 and I put it as a negative because you'll be paying this money out to invest it. And then I press here, it's written PMT. And then the next thing that I do is that I put the 35,000 Rand as my future value because that's how much he wants to have. So I put 35,000 and then I press FV. I leave it as a positive because that's the money he's expecting to receive in 10 years time. And then all I need to do is to compute my interest rate. So I press here, it's written CPT and then I press I slash Y and they just given me it's going to be 5.64%. So if he wants to have 35,000 Rand in 10 years time he, and he's willing to invest 2,700 Rand at the end of each year, the interest rate that he needs to earn is 5.64%. Let's look at the third one. 
We are told here that if you can borrow 20,000 Rand from the bank and you are required to pay back 3,000 Rand at the end of each year for the next 10 years, what is the interest rate that you are charged? So if you have to pay back 3,000 Rand at the end of each year for the next 10 years by borrowing 20,000 Rand, what is the interest rate that is charged there? Well, let's clear our time value of money calculations. Second function, FV, and then we have just done that. Let's see, it's actually to just clear my screen. So again, 20,000 Rand. Let's see if how, that's how much you would borrow today. That's your present value. And you're required to pay back 3,000 Rand at the end of each year. That is my PMT or my payment. And it's important to note whether it's at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, because that will determine how you do your calculation, because you'll have to put your calculator in begin mode if the payment will occur at the beginning of the year. So you pay attention to that. And we've done lessons specifically on that. Ordinary annuity for payments occurring at the end of the year, like this one, or annuity due for payments occurring at the beginning of this year. But in this case, it's at the end of the year, just like the previous example. So I put in my number of years. My number of years here is 10 years. So I put 10 and then I press N and then I put in my present value, which is 20,000 Rand. So I press 20,000 and I put it as PV. And that is positive because if I borrow from the bank, I'll be receiving that money today but you are required to pay back 3,000 Rand at the end of the year. So we put in 3,000 Rand and we put it as a negative because you have to pay this money out to repay back the loan. And then I press PMT and then all I need to do is to compute for my interest rate. So I press CPT and then I press I slash Y and that has given me 8.14%. That is the interest rate that you would be charged. Let's look at the fourth one quickly. If you deposit 6,000 Rand into an account that will grow to 12,000 Rand in four years, what is the interest earned if it is compounded quarterly? Now you can see here for this example, it's compounded quarterly. So we need to tell that to our calculator. Remember by default, this calculator is compounded annually and we've been fine thus far in our calculation because they were all compounded annually because they didn't indicate, but here they've indicated it's quarterly. So what do we have to do? We have to change the compounding to quarterly. So let me press second function fv to clear my time value of money calculation and then i need to change the compounding so we press here it's written second function or 2nd and then we press here it's written i slash y and then you can see that the payments per year is one but we are told that it's compounded quarterly that is the interest rate so we put four and then we press enter and that's for the payment if you press the downward arrow this is for the interest rate compounding you can see it automatically changes it to four as well that's what we want our c slash y must be four Okay, now that we've done that, we can click C slash C to clear our screen. Now we can do our calculation. If you deposit 6,000 Rand into an account, so 6,000 Rand is our present value. We put it as a negative because you'll be depositing this money and then it will grow to 12,000 Rand in four years time. So 12,000 Rand is what you'll be receiving. That's the future value and you put it as a positive and the number of years is four. So let's start with the number of years. You press four, but you don't press N as yet because it's compounded more than once per year. We have to press second function first and then press N. And then I press N again to confirm. And what has it done? It has taken the number of years, which is four, and it has multiplied it by the number of compoundings per year, which is four as well. Remember, if it's compounded quarterly, that's four times per year. So always remember that you press the number of years, second function, and then N and then N again. And then we can put in our present value is the 6,000 Rand. So we press 6,000 and then we put it as a negative. So we press plus slash minus and then we press PV. And then the future value is the 12,000 Rand. So we press 12,000, leave it as a positive and then we press FV. And all we need to do is to compute for the interest rate. So we press CPT and then I slash Y. And that has given us our interest rate, 17.71%. Let's move on to the fifth one. We are told here that if you can borrow 4,000 Rand from the bank and you're required to pay back 250 at the end of each month for the next two years, what is the interest rate that you are charged? Now, again, the payment will be occurring monthly. So we have to put that into our calculator. So let me clear my time value of money calculations, second function, and then FV, and I've just done that. Now I need to change the compounding periods to monthly because it's going to be occurring monthly. The payments will be made monthly. So I press second function and then I press I slash Y and you can see it's compounded quarterly as we have done in the previous example. So I changed it to 12 because if payments are occurring monthly, that is 12 times in a year. Now that we have done that, we press enter and then we have confirmed. If you press the download arrow, you can see the compounding for the interest is also 12 times per year. And then we press C slash C to clear our screen. Now we can do our calculation. 
It's borrowing 4,000 Rand from the bank, so that is our present value. And our PMT or our payment is 250 Rand because it will be occurring at the end of each month. That is ordinary annuity, as I mentioned before. And the time period is two years. So we press two and then we don't press N as yet. Remember, if it's compounded more than once per year, you have to press second function and then press N and then you press N again to confirm. And what it has done, it has taken the number of years, which is two, and it has multiplied it by the number of compoundings in a year, which is 12. And then we put in our present value, which is 4,000. So we press 4,000 and we put that as PV because it's the money that you'll be receiving from the bank. That's why we're leaving it as a positive. And then the 250, we put it in as a negative because it's money that you'll be paying at the end of each month. And then you press PMT. And all you need to do is to compute for the interest rate. So we press CPT and then we press I slash Y. And there it has given us 42.42%. Very high percentage, but that is what it is for this example here. So that's how much interest you are charged. Let's look at the last one here. We are told that a 12 year loan of 70,000 Rand has quarterly payments of 3,333 Rand, 33 cents. What is the interest rate if it is compounded quarterly? And the second one is if it is compounded annually. And the third one is if it is compounded monthly. So let's do this one here. Let's clear our memory. We press second function and then FV to clear the time value of money memory. And then press CE slash C. So let's do the first one. A 12 year loan of 70,000 Rand has quarterly payments of 3,333 Rand 33 cents. So this one here is the PMT. The 70,000 Rand is a PV because it's money you'll be receiving now. If the interest rate is compounded quarterly, what is it going to be? So let's calculate that one day. The loan is for 12 years. Now, you can see for the first one here, that if the interest rate is compounded quarterly and the payments are occurring quarterly. So our payment compounding and our interest rate compounding coincide. They're the same. So that's a good thing. If they were different, if your payment compounding and your interest rate compounding were different, then you'd have to take it into account. So let's do the first one. The quarterly payment is 3,333. So first of all, let's check if our Compounding is quarterly, so second function, I slash Y, you can see it's 12, so we have to change it to 4 because quarterly is 4 per year. So we press 4 and then we press enter. And if we press the downward arrow, you can see the interest rate compounding or the C slash Y is 4. And if you go up again, you can see the payment compounding is 4. And that is accurate because our payment compounding is quarterly and our interest rate is compounded quarterly for the first one. And then we press C slash C to clear our screen. Now we can do a calculation. It's for 12 years, so we press 12, and then we press second function, and then we press N, and then we press N again. So it has taken the 12 years, multiplied by the number of compoundings per year, which is four. And then we put in the 70,000 rand, so we press 70,000, and then we put it as the PV in positive, because it's a money you'll be receiving from the bank. And then the quarterly payment is 3,333 rand, 0.33, and we put it as a negative because you'll be paying this back to the bank. And then you press PMT. And then all you need to do is to compute for the interest rate. So you press CPT and then I slash Y. And you can see that it has given us our interest rate, 16.22% if it is compounded quarterly. What if it's compounded annually? What will the interest rate be? Well, with this financial calculator, it's quite simple to do that. So we press second function and then we press I slash Y. You don't have to redo all these things again. You don't have to put in the elements again. You just have to see here that the payments per year is four times, meaning it's occurring quarterly. And you can see here quarterly payments. So we are fine with that one. But then you press the downward arrow and then you press one because the interest rate would be compounded annually. And then you press enter. That's all you need to do. And then you press C slash C to clear your screen. And then you just press CPT and then you press I slash Y. And you can see that the interest rate, if it's compounded annually, it will be 17.24%. What if it's compounded monthly? Well, it's just as simple. Press C slash C. You press here where it's written second function and then you press I slash Y. And the payment still occurs quarterly, but the interest rate is compounded monthly. So you press the downward arrow for the interest rate, C slash Y, and then you put it as 12 because it's compounded monthly. And then you press enter. That's all you need to do. And then you press C slash C to clear your screen. And then you press CPT and then you press I slash Y. And there is your interest rate if it's compounded monthly, 16.01%.
I hope it has made sense. I hope it was simple enough. It is that simple with this financial calculator. If you are a bit confused or you'd like to learn more about this one here, we've done a lesson specifically on nominal interest rate. That's if the interest rate is compounded more than once per year and effective interest rate where you get the annual percentage rate. You'll find the link to that lesson in the description below. If you have gained value from this lesson, if you have learned something, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it to those you think it might help. And if you'd like one-on-one -on -one sessions with us, we offer them at the reasonable rates and you'll find our contact information in the description below. Till next time. Cheers.